old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Exciting episode of After Hours. Joining me in the studio is Mr. G. He's ready for a, a big fight. Who are you fighting? Who are we fighting? Uh, Who are you fighting? I'm not fighting anyone. <laughs> well, I was going to fight fight a big Lenny. I know, but you that know, was canceled a char- long time ago. Uh, maybe uh, maybe Claude Van Damme wants to uh, <laughs> see fight if Because you- char- when, when I was going to fight Lenny... I I approached. I asked Lee, Lee if you want to fight Sean Ray. Yeah, right? I have a, hold, I have he, an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> and then I hold on, I have an idea. Hold Chuck on, Tito. hold on. Uh, Greg Valentino, you think you can get Mark Wahlberg to fight uh, Mr. G? Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Awesome. I that think Mr. Awesome. G's fighting life. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Hey, life. I think life's going to hit you harder than anything else anyway. That's right. Richard Rodriguez joining like us again. Uh, Greg, of course, and uh, John Romano. So, welcome, guys. What's right. that little Thank figurine you, you got on your desk there, John? What is that in the back? This is a um, this yeah. This is a um, gift from a client in Canada. Okay, it's got some kind of whalebone or something that you're not supposed to have on it. But, it actually um, looks like Mr. G. If, if you... <laughs> it doesn't look like gum. It doesn't look like gum. It looks... Wow. <laughs> it might be the Inuit Indians up? that talk to Connolly's oh. always talking about. Yeah. <sighs> John, what's yeah. he holding up one of Mr. G's cookies? This right here. <laughs> oh, what the, that's a piece of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Hey, John, oh, wow. I got one too. Look. Great Pyramid Dude. of Giza. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a piece of the Berlin Wall. Wow. That's oh, cool. that's sick. Are you are you allowed to take those or no? <laughs> uh, let's just say the military was involved. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Why wow, they broke that down? They they smashed it. Down. I thought you weren't allowed to take pieces of it though. You know? What? Well, no, I got it. I got it from a. That was from actually from Checkpoint Charlie. I, I got it from a, a buddy of mine in the army who was there when they knocked it down. And he grabbed a bunch of pieces and brought them home. Cool. I, I'm more John, you know what? I'm more I sh- impressed with the pyramid, John, than anything actually. Had you, yeah, John, I, you know what? I could, I should have took. How'd you get the I pyramid had, piece? I, I was down in New York City, and I right after the fucking nine eleven, and it was chunks and rocks all over the place of the of the World Trade Center. I should have fucking took one of those. Your girlfriend's yeah. still selling them on eBay. I see it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, no. yeah ask her, ask her what this is. Yeah. Ask her what this is worth, and what a piece of the Berlin Wall is worth. It's got to be worth. Dude, that's it. probably fucking. This- if you look at the Great Pyramid, the big one in Giza, Khufu's, is there's there's these two beams that go up. There's like an entrance, right? And I climbed up there. You're not supposed to go up there. I climbed up there and I just I just kicked my foot and this broke off. <laughs> Get out of here, really? Oh, so you actually stole it? Holy man! <laughs> so I put it in my pocket and it, probably that and a lot. Put, and these two guys with machine guns come up, to, get to the, like the bottom of the step. And they go, you tell me I have to move. So it was like I just. It's kind of like where that thing is, where the doorway is. You like step down like two steps, so you were kind of like a little bit lower than than when you climb up. So I nobody could see what I was if doing. Everyone but. who went hey, to see yeah. the pyramids of Giza over the old eternity that they've been standing there did the same thing you did. There wouldn't be any pyramids left. There wouldn't be. And I know. I feel terrible. John, imagine, imagine, <laughs> imagine if you would have kicked that. Imagine if you would have kicked that fucking thing and everything started coming. Right, fucking you're holding caved in. <laughs> 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 Fuck the John knocked down. down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if they, all, if they all came apart, maybe we'd figure out how they freaking built them. Well, you know? John, you got a sample. You got a rock sample there. Why don't you try to break it down? Well, and send it you to know, the lab. But I got to tell you, the thing that impressed me, 
you know, that people say aliens built them because there's no there's no way humanly possible by even by today's standards that we could have moved 200, what, 2.2 million blocks weighing 20 tons each from the quarry through the river up the hill into the pyramid. And it's just if 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 the pyramid was built in 25 years, like they said it was. And they worked around the clock, 365 days a year. It would have they they would have had to have, have quarried, transported, and set one block every two minute and a half minutes. Ain't happening. Wow. Well, so um, now what's your so, explanation? Because Jimmy the Bull my, says there's no my, alien, so the, 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 you, no, can't, I, I, you can't you can't use the alien. alien thing going. No, I I not aliens. I'm not using aliens. I think I think my opinion is is that. You know, if people look at the, ha- the amount of time man has been on Earth. It's like two hundred thousand years at, at, at the most. Right. Okay, yeah. so 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 that could be if that was off. I mean, out of out of what four and a half billion is how old the Earth is. So if if that's a that's a, such a sliver, it's like a hair that that could be off by a hundred thousand years, easy, right? right? So man could be here three hundred thousand years now if. The, my theory is that we were here a long time ago. Those pyramids are way older than 4,000 yeah. years old. They were here 10, 12,000 years ago. And we had another civilization that was more advanced living here mm. that somehow became victim of some kind of cataclysm. Because when you look at the ruins in Egypt, something blew up. I mean, this the stones are scorched and um, you know, these granite chunks that weigh as much as like a house are just strewn across the desert. Right. And it's, but the nope. thing that you got to understand is when you're there and you're seeing that shit, right? They have rose m- granite carved out of, you know, c- cornices at the you know, crown molding, but like, you know, three feet by like, you know, six feet and, you know, 30 feet long. And these curves are carved into the, in, into granite, which is one, one step below a diamond in hardness. With the tools they had in those days, they had copper. They had nothing stronger than copper. How could they have carved these in, in incredible carvings, inset right angles, uh, uh, bore holes? Slide, they, they, you can't do it. You can't do it today. Do, but they somehow did it. Do you so, think? I, I agree with what you're saying. But you know what? It, it seems though, if we did have uh, you know advanced civilization there, who could do this stuff and had machines and stuff like that to do all this stuff. You think they would have done a better job? <laughs> it still looks a kind of like job. Now, well, th- th- my uh, question is: Do you think that there was more there that, like, made of wood that kind of like disintegrated? No. You know? do, you know, do you know that the the big pyramid is actually eight sided? It's not four sided. Oh yeah. There's only a a minute during the course of you know the equinox or something when you can see the light is just right, mm. where each dot, where each triangle is actually cut in half. And it's yeah, but you know what? It, it's, John, it's absolutely you know what? I agree symmetrical with you. Per, and perfect. I agree with you, but you know what I think the craziest shit is? They found those same type of pyramids in Machu Picchu. You know what I mean? Like not the, well. They, they found what they found was what they found was similar styles of building. They didn't find the exact right. same. But so but how does somebody? But, how does a beaver in 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 North Dakota know how to build a dam exactly the same as the beaver in in Constantinople? I mean, they build b- dams the same way. It's in their DNA. Energy. We build shit the same the way. It's in our DNA. My point is that we were here way longer before anybody, you know, the the, the current standard is. We were here probably three or 400,000 years ago. We ex- we went up through an incredible growth and, and, and advancement, and then some cataclysmic event or whatever caused an extinction. No, I agree. Was, I think... The Earth was. Now, if you ever watch those vi- those movies, like you know, the Earth in th- ten thousand years and in a hundred thousand years, like what happens? Yeah. So at, mm-hmm. things decay. The bridges are all going to rust away to nothing in a hundred thousand years. Everything. The only thing that's going to be left is fucking rocks. Right. That's it. So the rocks we got left are the pyramids, the Great Wall, the 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 the, 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 the Nazca lines in in the desert in Peru. That's the only thing we got left, and we don't understand these things because we can't replicate them today. Right. right. So I think that, I agree we had an advanced civilization, but I think they migrate just like the fucking like the Mayans and the Aztecs. 
if you do the DNA on the Amer- you know, Native Americans and, and, and everything, the Hopi Indians and all that shit, they have their that's that's really they left the forest and came up this way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe that the people just up and left, you know, and moved on where the food was. I mean, there's no food out there in the well, desert. No, but it makes sense what John's saying, because why? In other words, we, we went backwards and because all of a sudden we went from technology to nothing to stone age no, we started yeah. over we started well, over we didn't start someone lived but through that's the what cat- i'm saying someone no, survived the cataclysm maybe, no maybe not maybe not maybe now, the same forces that created man in the first yeah. place did it again in the second well, place. if everything got wiped out by some cataclysm and a couple people lived on the ground you know a hundred people survived they could have repopulated they had to rebuild everything from scratch again you know and i also oh, think that's that, what I'm i saying. also think that one of the mistakes people make is grouping us all into one tribe yeah so like greg said there's the indians over here and then you got people from africa and you got there's different there's different places where people are are e- evolved it wasn't i don't think it was just one subset i think it was 100 well, percent numerous they think the continents were all the, connected john so that would be more you know make more I, sense. but yes and no i mean if you look at if you look at intellect okay you, you, and I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but it's the truth. This is facts. Intellect spreads from the equator either way. The further away you get from the equator, the higher the intellect gets. Measurable, measurable intellect. So the, the, this, the theories are that, you know, there's some tribes that originated over here were able to do these kinds of things. And there were other tribes. But John, that don't you think, advanced. hold on, hold on. Don't you think it's a lot easier to live at the equator because there's no, there's no weather changes so that when you move away from the equator and you get cold, you have to be a little more ingenuity to, to, to figure out how to I, stay I fucking the, warm. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think, I don't think it's that you have less brain power. It's just that you have to think up more things but, to be able to survive. There's more food. And that, and that, food, and that rel- over time, that evolves. Yeah. Into I mean, it's intellect. already there. There's fish. Yeah. I mean, look. The the it's like, the I don't energy. want to leave Florida now because I don't want to have to go shovel snow anymore and fucking deal with that bullshit up in New yeah, York. Yeah, but you know the difference. The thing is, <laughs> yeah. if you're set in an environment that you have to think <laughs> right. in order to survive, your brain they, power is going to be better than the guy. They moved according to the food, though. They moved according to the food. Right. That's Some why of them. The people yeah, yeah. on the equator could just smoke they weed all day. They didn't care. Well, they except, if you were, except if you were an Eskimo and you had a fish and eat, you know, be, you know, live off the land. There's look, there's all kinds of theories about how people migrated and evolved. There, my point in the pyramids and all of this ancient technology that we can't replicate today is that there was an interruption I agree. I agree. in human yeah. development. We had been extremely advanced. And something happened to knock enough of us out that that advancement disappeared for a long enough time for all of the material things that we created to disintegrate and Mm -hmm. go away except for the rocks. And that really is only about 50,000 years or, you know, under 100,000. So, you know, the the timelines that scientists have set up, if they're off by a hundred thousandth of a percent, there's 50,000 years right there. I mean, also, John, just because they can't find skeletons of of, of people from 300,000 years ago doesn't mean that they they weren't there. It just could be that they were incinerated, you know. Well, I'm saying like the the Throgs Neck Bridge. If you don't paint the Throgs Neck Bridge, Ever it's again? How, how long is it going to last? Right. right. You know what? The Verrazano, the Verrazano Bridge in New York has to get painted every single day. What they do is they start here. Start they one end. Really <laughs> and when they're done, they start. They and they work that's their way that's called you. Un- that's called the union does <laughs> that's that. Called, uh, right. That's I called union here. painting. <laughs> no, but they, let me tell you, they have to do it. John's right. It's a preservation thing, though. Right. And I believe that they migrated. That humans migrated. And they left back all that stuff. Hey, listen, we don't even know what's under the ocean. We, there's like you know, Atlant- you know, Atlantis. There could be a lot of these people could have moved in, and you know the oceans have shifted. So we don't, you know, we don't know what's. Yeah, I think I think you're right. A lot of the civilizations they might find under the ocean were not necessarily people living underwater. It just that wasn't no, water no, no, there. No, no. It was I'm land there. You know, previously, yeah. No, I'm not saying they lived underwater, but they migrated. Got to get the fuck out of there right. because the fucking oceans. Right. Cha- Listen, Montana, which is in the middle of the United States, was once underwater. You know what I mean? Greg, they didn't have a lot of time to migrate. They had like a day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if they ate a couple of Mr. G's cookies, they would have uh, had the energy to go fucking anywhere. 
<laughs> Mr. G's protein snacks.com. Check it out. I've been munching on cookies, but all right, let's, I want to talk about uh, Jerry Ward because I know Greg, I know you were close look, to him. You and your girl. Look, oh yeah. Yep. Jerry Ward, Raw TV. That's his shirt. Yep. And I, um, I got a bunch of shoes. J- Johnny Bra. How come John Bravo is always a, an emotional wreck over something? He to the point where he can't come on the show and express himself. The guy well, was friends with uh, Jerry. I wanted him to come on the show and talk about Jerry, and he's too. Uh, he's like a. He's like a. I think he just didn't have a chance to blow dry his hair. To be honest with you, Dave, call him up. Dude, I was good. I, friends. Yeah, I, was him. I, I spoke with him. I spoke with him personally, man. Um, since um, he's working with me on a couple of other um things, and yeah. I mean. I didn't know Jerry to the extent that uh, that John Bravo knew him, but um, when I got out, um, Jerry really impacted me, man. When he when he when he saw all the hatred and bitterment that I had, and he, and he sent me that personal message, and yeah, and dude, like I literally spoke with him when you when you when when I was told the news, I literally spoke with him the day before, oh, wow. and we were we had plans of him getting on my podcast, me getting on his podcast, and I was thanking him, man, for you know for really changing my perspective, and just that, dude, it impacted me. I cried on my video, you know, talking because when you when you when you're a genuinely good person like like Jerry was, man, it's like it it could it, it could impact you know it could impact anybody and and uh, John had a good relationship, good solid relationship with yeah, Jerry. Yeah, you know what? Listen, all right, John Romano and I go back for twenty five years. I consider him my brother. Okay, if John died tomorrow or yesterday, I would be on the podcast today talking about him, as broken up inside as I would be and as grieving as I would. I'd be on here talking about him and telling people how much he was, how important he was to me, and the stories that we did. Johnny Bravo's like he's got a, his whole process of getting ready to do a show between you know blowing what it drying is, his hair. Everybody, and what it, is, it takes what it him is. like three hours to prepare for the show. He has to emotionally. No, everybody's prepare. different. Everybody's you know what different. It is? People, people mourn differently. I don't believe. Yes. Yes. You see, like yes. oh, you see, like I like. When my grandmother passed away, dude, like uh, for like three months, nobody knew what the hell was going on with mm. me, man. Like I, 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 I sat in, I like I closed myself up in a in the room and and like That's complete and complete and complete depression, man. Um, and you know, did like, she you know, raise you? Ah, um, yeah. Yeah, well, that was me, your mother. It was like your mother. That's a different story, like you know. My, yeah, and and when uh when my step pops passed away, that was like practically my father. That was the first time in prison when I couldn't go out to see him and get a furlough hmm. dude i practically that was the first time that i attempted to commit suicide for how bad it impacted oh, wow. me because i'm now not able to actually see my father that i considered my father and you know you know get buried right. you know so and, and some people some people really deal with it a different way like i'm an emotional person i mean look how emotional i got man when when, we, when i was talking about john romano man yeah <laughs> And thank you him for reaching out, you know, reaching out to me, man, and showing me love what during that, you know, during those dark times. Um, do I you're think gonna, look, you, Rich, if you're going to be a social media guy, the the fans want to see that you were a real person, and there's nothing wrong with being emotional on a show like this, a podcast, or telling people how grieving, how much grief you're grieving, you're doing because you know what, it opens you up to being something that they, uh, the fans, can relate to. Wait a minute. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Listen, I don't know. I might be closer to Jerry than anybody on this panel because I used to go out with Jerry when he'd be in New York. We'd go to dinner. We we would talk about personal stuff. He knows personal stuff about my life and my girlfriend and all of us together. His wife, my girlfriend was just, you know, texting with Aaron and stuff, you know, his wife. I mean, I Jerry was a, was a great guy, but we all grieved differently. I, I couldn't get online and start just talking about that stuff but he was a very very deep deep human being yeah, what who, was give uh, us some insights what did lot, the I, wife tell you i mean in terms of like the that well, they figured she, out a cause didn't of talk death about she no we didn't talk All she right. did my you know we kept it more brief about more about supporting her okay like when i even i just put up a little post on instagram just saying man i because you don't understand jerry was basically her her every, you know, he was her, they had a great relationship. He was her everything. Jerry was her mentor. She had like, you know, like a lot of people have anxiety. So she trained and got in shape for shows and they were just boy, you know, they had just met each other. He was training her. And then that uh, evolved into a really that. close friendship. Okay. When did they so get they, married? He went from her train. Yes. When did they but get I'm married? He went from her. 
They got married about two years, two, about two, two and a half, three years ago. Okay. Something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know exactly. I, I, I've known them before they were married and I know them after they were married. But here's the point. The point is, is that she was, you know, she, she, she worked for heart surgeon and she was in right there with her, you know, I take the heart out and put the heart in and right. all that stuff. And, you know, the thing is, is that she she didn't have a lot of time to do stuff. She's not like a social media person. She's not like a person who goes, you know, goes on the Internet and posts all kind of stuff. You won't see that from her. But she's a very deep person within. And and I just the first thing I thought of is, holy fuck, Jerry, what did you do? You know what I mean? Like what well, you knew that he's such a smart guy. And if he wasn't at I, my mindset is if he wasn't at that fucking show that he was doing yeah he might have gotten himself to the hospital Aaron probably would have told him go to the damn hospital because everybody was telling him go to the hospital okay but he he probably wanted to show no no let me just do this podcast you know like I'm here for this I'm assuming this okay but knowing Jerry the way he was because he was smart I first thing I would have thought of is Jesus Christ Jerry you had that pain I mean you should have you know what I mean? Like everybody's telling you to go to the hospital. No, 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 no. Let me just let me do this podcast. This is what I'm here for. You know what I mean? I honestly think if he wasn't there, he might have he might have went to the hospital. Things might have been a different outcome. But the thing is, Aaron, Aaron and him, he would like she looked up to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that was I, I mean, I feel for her. You you. You'd have to know that kind of loss. Well, you always feel know. for the people who are the survivors, uh, Greg. Uh, Jerry's in a better place now. It's, it's, it's the people you leave behind that are the ones who are well, uh, that's, grieving. Yeah, but this this girl Dirty. was very, you know, most people have, you know, this girl, her life, they, they, it was really seriously wrapped around with him. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. She's so, she's a, such a good girl, too. I love I love Aaron, you know. Uh, uh, oh. And I got to be honest, she had a really unique closeness. So... You know, I know because I've had a, my, you know, my girl passed away, my girlfriend who I was with for years and stuff, you know, and uh, that's like a, not, you know, it's your spouse in your brain and it, but it's your world. So it's, it's like a whole, it's a whole different thing. Your whole life changes. You know, Aaron, Aaron is engulfed in her work. That girl works like 12, 14 hours a day. Okay. Because again, she works for, she works helping doctors put hearts in bodies. She's there in the room when they're taking a heart out, which is the fucking ironic thing about this whole thing because it's a heart situation, you know. Mm, yeah. And uh, I well, mean, we don't, we don't, we don't know it's a heart situation. We right? don't know. Right, are I they could, doing? I mean, are I they could, doing an autopsy, Greg? I, I don't. We, we talk. Well, she had just talked to her yesterday. Oh, so you didn't. So you didn't talk to her. Is what you're saying? No, I don't. I'm too scared. You know, what I mean, like I can't. I'm emotional fucking guy. You know what I mean? I, I'm not scared. I'm, all, I'm emotional, and I I don't want to. I almost feel like I don't want to start asking her too much. We're asking her how she's doing. She said I'm doing really well. Thank you guys and all. You know, like she didn't want to. We didn't want to ask her. So what's you know like, like what's the scoop? Give me the scoop with Jerry. You know, like. Did he do this? Scoop. Did he do I, think, I think asking is just showing that you are concerned and you you know that you want to you know. Uh, yeah, but you know what. Everybody else wants to run to the. I, I'm not gonna put that shit out there. You know, what I mean, like if I well, did find Greg, I, until they do an autopsy, no one will know for sure. You know, and they're, I'm no sure they're gonna, gonna do know. one, right? Did they right. do it? Did well, they do but one? You, but you brought up an interesting point, Greg, when you were saying that if she would have been with him, she probably would have uh, um, urged him to to get himself Maybe checked. Hundred percent. But but this is 100%. the thing that's crazy. It's like <laughs> I'm even a victim of that myself. Like you know when you know when I would be sick and I would I, and I would downplay the 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 level of of sickness, and then like two or three days later, you know two or three days later, like my ex wife or my girl would have been like, hey, you should have went to the hospital. You know, with, right. with something that I thought was just a, like a basic flu, all of a sudden I'm bedridden for like two weeks, and it's just I think I personally think that it's just us men being the alpha males thinking that we can endure anything that that leads us to to think that it's like hey you know what we can move on we got to do this we got to work we got to you know we got to make things happen i mean like perfect example ever since i got out man i've been working from four in the freaking morning to like to like nine ten o'clock at night my mom sees me she's like man it's like take you to take a break it's like my girl i was like hey man are you going to be calling me like my son it's like dad i want to talk to you and it's because it's like we're in that mindset of being this raging workaholic, like being jacket. devoted, being, you know, it's like, you know, just just being on that relentless focus. One of the things in which I've seen from Jerry, from the little that I know him, but the times in which I've spoken to him, 
It's like he has like this this focus, man. When you know when he's in the show, when he's at his, you know, when he, you know, when he when he's on his podcast, when he's interacting with individuals, it's like it's it's Jerry and his attention, man. And yeah, but and, you know what? But Richard, you know what the kick in the balls is the most uh, is that he would be the first person. See, he's really smart, Jerry. Uh, you know, Jerry and I have had some really seriously deep conversations and everything. He's a very smart guy. I'm telling you that what kills you is you're like, that's a basic thing. When you get really bad pains and so bad that you're like, you know, like, oh, my God. And it's on that list. And everybody's telling you that. You say, God damn it, Jerry, I'm almost angry. Why didn't you go to the goddamn hospital? Everybody's telling you to go. You know, and, and he'd be the first one to tell you. If he was with you and you had that pain there, he'd be like, dude, let's go. I'll take you. Let's go to the emergency room. I'll take you. I'll go with you. Let's go. But because he was not home and he was at a bodybuilding show where he had to fly out, okay, and he's on somebody else's dime, you know what I mean? They're paying him to do this live stream and he's got all these situations. If he was just at home, that never would have happened. He would have said, Aaron, I got to go. Aaron would have said, go to the hospital. He would have said, I got to go to the hospital. He knew better. He knew better. It's. This was the perfect storm for something really bad to happen. Isn't there a doctor because at those shows, Greg? Uh, do I don't know. I mean, he could have talked to Victor Prisk, who's a doctor. I mean, no, but do he, they have a cardiac yeah, surgery? You know what the events like this? Is there an but, actual did, Victor's physician? always at those shows, though. But he but, uh, yeah, but, but wait a minute. He was, he, it was there when Steve guys, Stone died. He tried to revive him. You don't understand. Yeah. yeah, Steve Stone sat in the corner and they fucking walked over there and he was yeah. dead. Listen to me. You, you, you know, I know Steve really. Forget about it. He grew up right here. But um, listen, that's neither, neither here nor there. The thing is, Victor Prisk and fucking 10 emergency doctors could have been there and told Jerry, go to the hospital. Jerry's mindset was, no, I'm here to work. This is probably just a pulled muscle or some sort of thing, maybe a gas bar. I don't know what the fuck he thought at the time. Downplaying I didn't talk it. That's what you, but that's where that further validates what I was saying about downplay. I mean, how many times have we downplayed an injury or downplay something to the standpoint where um, three weeks, you know, five, you know, three days, so, you know, three days later, it's like it's a, it's yeah. a you know. And on the other hand, day. you have Jimmy the Bull who's at the emergency room every other day, you know, because of yeah, a, but he was there, a but sausage he's there sandwich. For, yeah, no, hey, but he's there for companionship. Not <laughs> yeah, right. He's got one of the nurses. He likes he's, that nurse. That got one no, I'm, I'm telling, telling you, though. No friends here anymore. Yeah. No, nobody's here for me anymore. Everybody's got, you know. Listen, I'm telling you, if Jerry was home, if this would have happened in his home. Well, his wife would have made him go. That's why, yeah. Well, even he, his own brain would have probably told him, I got to go. I got to go. But because he was away and was obligated to do this fucking goddamn bodybuilding show, you know what I'm saying? And he was on somebody else's dime. He was far from home. You know what I mean? I'll go to the doctor when I get home or I'll go whatever, get this checked out when I get home. That's, I, I'm, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but that's that kind of mindset. Right. I think we're all a little bit like that. Dave, if you were working at like the Arnold Classic or one of those shows and you had some sort of pain... You might be like, look, I can maybe sleep this off, especially if you didn't think it was a heart attack, right. you know, or, or whatever, something yeah. to do with the heart. You would have thought I'm going to just like what Jerry thought. I'm going to try to sleep this off. I'm going to try to, you know, whatever. But especially since you're far away, who the fuck wants to be what, far from home and it be at a big event and be obligated to do this show and then say, oh, shit, let me go run to the emergency room where you're going to probably miss shit. And, you know, your mindset's different, you know, and that's I believe if he was home, he would be alive. That's yeah. just my my thinking. Just knowing you know, it, do you guys, he's a smart guy. Right, do you believe in um like you know people having like subconscious awareness of what's going to happen to them, like almost like a premonition? Because if uh, Tyler pull up Jerry's um, YouTube channel, Bios Three Train. I know I saw the thing where his, he said yeah, his last uh, video he posted like the day before he passed was like um, there was the word "dead" in the title in all capitals. Yes, and, and that's why when I first found out, I thought people were like you know really. Uh, Maria Goyce is the one who told me, they, you know, uh, Comerica Muscle's ex-wife. I, and I she, saw it I, when I did my tribute to my, I saw that was the first, I went to his channel, I saw it, I'm like, oh my God, that's so weird. He did, but I thought that, that I, after I saw that title, I thought, okay, this might be an internet rumor. Do you understand what I'm saying? No. Because of that. But no, I don't think he had a premonition of it. He was a very smart, if you knew Jerry, he's very smart. He would have fucking done so. He, 
it, it wasn't his time. I believe that he was he that it was. Well, a, a it mistake. was his time because you know when you die, it's your time. That's it. I, you know we don't. We I, don't make I, time yeah, but it. I don't believe. I believe in fate. I don't believe that God oh, sits up there with a checkbook checklist. Well, if you believe uh, in yeah, fate, then you do believe that it's when you it's your time. It's your time. That's what fate you is. No, like fate. Like for instance, this, <laughs> this kid I listen. This fate is what means you. It's when it's your time. It's your time. No, it's fate. What happens is listen to me. This kid I grew up with, he died. He, he, he was listening to a seat, uh, cassette tape. This is how long back this goes. You know? and, uh, while What's he was that? driving. My son yeah, wants listen, to know what a cassette tape is. <laughs> he was driving He was driving his car. He was listening to a cassette tape. Oh, do you have a cassette tape? Do you have a cassette tape on your desk? Of course he does. I, I, I he have probably one, has I one, one of those boom boxes with the go, two cassettes I, I so you can tape the tape. Question. Remember that? Hold on. Yeah. But does he have an eight track? <laughs> what? I have eight track tape. Oh my god! He has an eight track <laughs> <and> cassette probably <laughs> converter. I know. don't. I have the eight track tapes. But I don't have the eight track player, but I do have cassette players all over. <laughs> Wait, listen to me, though. Papa, right. he's a uh, he's driving and he fucking pops the tape. If you remember, John, you pop the tape. The tape comes out. Sometimes it falls. He right. bent down like this and he drove into a tree and wow. he, and he died. What I'm saying is, if he fucking finish the song if he didn't pop the tape out if he didn't you know it's fate i don't believe though that it's a checklist that there's a time oh it's your time i don't believe that shit you know what i'm saying uh, that's just my thinking I, I i feel it's a little different i know some guys are gonna write well, oh, well I, would dis I would disagree with you because it's the same situation and i would agree with dave because there are people that are sitting in their homes watching tv yeah and pass away watching tv like like enjoying themselves and like you know, you that you would have never thought anything was gonna happen, and and like I, I'm a believer of you know when it when it's your time, it's your time. No matter how healthy you are, there's people that are healthy as a fox, yeah, man. That's right. No, but I'm saying to you, I believe in fate. Just because you die when you're watching TV or you're laying in your bed, what I'm saying to you is that it, there are some situations that if you didn't fuck up, you might have not made, you know, I mean, a guy driving off a cliff but making a wrong turn. But fancy. fate, Greg would say that that was meant to happen. I don't believe that. You really believe no, that? You don't believe in fate. Then you don't believe in fate. What what Greg what Greg is saying is it's like accidental. It's like right. You know, Thank there's you. No, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time. time. It just happens. Thank you, know? you John. So Romano. you're saying that that, that there, it isn't fate. You're saying it's it's just hap it's chance. It's no, random no, chance. You guys are talking past each other. No, we're not. What happened? Yeah, you are. What Greg is saying is that fate. In Greg's mind, fate is the luck of the draw. This is what's right. going to happen today. It, you have fuck, no, there's no premonition. Luck. There's no, it just, you step off the curb, there's the bus. That's what happened. Oh, and thank so you. there's no, there's no like, oh, it was, you know, you could predict it, it was coming. It's, it's, it, it's just luck, bad luck. It's just you're right. at the wrong place at the wrong time on that particular day at that moment in at that split second in time. And that's, you know, the people getting car accidents, the pe motorcycle accidents, fall off cliffs, whatever. Th th these are just the things that happen. I know a rock climber friend of mine just died. OK, he was climbing in. in he was climbing where he, you know, a route he's climbed 100 times before. He's fucked up. He slipped. He went. He didn't he, he didn't have a rope. And he was free soloing and boom, dead. So you can say, well, fate, you know, made him climb that day. No, he would climb that day anyway. He was just happening. You know, or he could have not climbed. If he didn't climb, he wouldn't have gotten killed. Maybe he would have gotten killed 10 years from now climbing. Who knows? But if you, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to it, Dave. It just, it just is what it is. It happens. Thank you. No, Thank, you Thank you, John Romano. No, what I'm. Thank you, John Romano. Let me explain I what I'm. What, I, what I'm saying is that everything is energy in this universe, right? We feel energy. We can sense energy. Sometimes, when it's your time or something's going to happen that's bad, you get a premonition. Okay, it's subconscious. You don't know it. You don't even realize that it's there, and it comes out sometimes subconsciously in the things you do or say. That's why we see, I mean, ask Justin Miller when before George died. I mean, George Peterson said some some crazy stuff like it was almost like he knew he was going to die. He was, you know, giving Justin speeches about, you know, and same thing with Jerry. All I'm saying is that he might have titled that that video, the title he did subconsciously, because for some reason that word was important in his brain. 
and maybe he knew something uh, was going to happen to himself. Well, I don't know. Hey, what about like, that? What about that? Te- that post that Flex Wheeler just made that's kind of cryptic and you know about yeah. Yeah, I, I look. I hope Flex is is okay, but I think Flex is just in a bad place because he had surgery. He's in a lot of pain right now, and when you're in pain. And, you know, you have just too much happening to you. And look at what's going on with Flex between the leg yeah. and the kidneys. I think he just was in a bad mental place when he wrote that post. Right. I don't. I, you, I hope you think that's- to God he's not dying, you know, that he's not in, a, in that bad a place. I think he just was in – because I've talked to a few people who said they talked to him. They said he was doing great the next day. And so I think he just had a bad night or something like that. Well, but, I mean, can you relate that to what, you know um, – Jerry wrote on, you know, in the, in the headline. I mean, no, I'm, like I'm just saying, you know, it, look, it, do, it doesn't Tommy mean anything what Jerry wrote. I'm just saying it's, 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 I don't know if that, I'm trying to think of the right, I, I, liter- listen, the right hey, literary I, term that my father would use for it. It's like almost like, I understand. I understand what Dave's saying because it ironically, and I believe this yeah. is ironic because D- Jerry wrote common sense is dead and common sense would have made him go to the doctor right. and everything else. Yeah. But I don't believe, yeah, I don't believe weird. that that was, yeah. listen, I know another guy here. His friend died. My, 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 my sister's daughter, her friend, her friend, he died in a motorcycle accident. His friend came down from the Bronx, went to the funeral on his way home on a motorcycle, went, came on a way home from the funeral. He got killed and fucking got hit on the Taconic Parkway over here. You know what I mean? So he died coming home from the, you know, doing the same thing, riding a motorcycle. I don't believe, sometimes I think God has. His checklist, he says, oh, shit, what the fuck is he doing up here? <laughs> uh, wait, 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 how did he? Oh, fuck, you're not going to believe it. He, 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 like John said, he stepped off a curb and a fucking busted him. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he wasn't due up here. To, wait, I don't think he'd say Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he the movie Heaven he Can Wait. Due. It's like Heaven Can he Wait. He wasn't yeah. due up here for fucking, <laughs> he's got 20 more years on his list. How the hell did he? I stepped in front of that goddamn bus. He should have looked. Whatever. Right. That's what I'm thinking. You know so it I mean? could be a combination of the two is what you're saying. Right. Then. right. You know yeah. what I'm saying, Jeff. I right. think I you're right. I think there could be accidents that, that take you prematurely. But Jerry didn't really have an accident. You know? But, you know, I, it's, it's funny when you when you kind of equate it to what you witness in life. You know, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was driving the car and made this turn by a, 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 a an office building or whatever. And, and, and a car pulled out in front of me in such a way. And, and there were sprinklers were on the road was wet. And I was thinking to myself, if I was on my motorcycle, I'd be down right now. Could, could maybe even dead, but there would have been a no way if I was on my bike, which I almost took, I took the car because Valerie said, can you drop the dry cleaning off? And so I can't take the dry clean on my motorcycle. So I took the car. Now, had I been, had she not said, take the dry cleaning, I would have been on my bike. And there is no way I've been riding for 40 years. There is no way I would have gone, be unable to avoid that car stopping and that the way the incline was the wet, the spring, no way I would have gone down. Hundred percent. Maybe your clothes would have been dry. You should have been like this while you were driving. But then I could also would say if I was on my motorcycle, I would have been there way sooner than that car pulled out. But, you know, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but the way to honor see, someone's that's... death is by living life. Right. There that's you how go. you honor their death. Because if they were saying, if you say, well, what are you doing? Don't cry over me. I want you to go out there and live. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. I agree. You know, and maybe at but these, they... like the UFC has doctors, like actual doctors that are there that are that you pay when you have any type of MMA event, like at Rick's event, yeah. is a doctor. There should be a doctor uh, I, at all these events. George, that, all, he, all he had to do was... was I know, was, but was, I'm was, saying was, an actual... An, that, that's hired, that's what he does. There was a million people that could have taken him to the ER just for a check, you know? Or even... Yeah, I don't understand care. something. Sometimes people don't want to hear that. Look, I'm here to do this. Right. No, no, Greg's 100% later. right. Greg's 100% right. Jerry was a worker. I'll go later. I'll Jerry go later. was a Look, worker. He wanted to get some sleep. He said, I got to get up right. the next morning and do the live stream. And he never woke up. You know, that, that's what right. I... Gary Unity he paid me to be here. Right. I, I don't want to disappoint mm-hmm. him. I got a live stream with Joe Matarats. We got to do this together. You know what I mean? I got I can. I'm too busy. You know what? Tomorrow's the last day. I'll go when I get home. I'll go to the doctor. We'll check this shit out. It's probably a muscle, whatever. That's one hundred percent. One hundred percent. We are a victim of our own stubbornness. I mean, one hundred percent. I agree with you. 
Definitely. Yeah. We are. It's, but sometimes we make that mistake, and I believe he was a smart guy. The problem is I feel the first thing me and Lucia, my girlfriend, said was, oh, my God, Aaron, because Aaron and him, everybody, look, you may all say, I got a great relationship with my wife, but they, they were like they had, like they filled each other's gaps. He was her mentor. She looked up to him. You know, she almost like idolized that guy. You know what I'm saying? And he looked up to her. He, he was always bragging because she was a, you know, this isn't some girl that's in the fitness industry here. This is a girl who works to save lives. I mean, she's had beating hearts right there in her hands with right. the doctor. She's in, you know, she's in the operating room while they're doing heart replacement surgery. I mean, it's, you know, she worked 12, 14 hours a day and he, he, you know, he was very proud of her, but she looked up to him. Like, you know, she, again, she started out as his client. She was, then they became best friends. Right. You know what? You know, he was the, the reason he why was dating other girls, the reason you know why I mean? we're, ha the reason why we're having, uh, uh, emotional issues dealing with this is because it could have happened to any one of us. That's oh, why yeah, it was yeah. so, it was so haphazard that it really, it could have happened to any one of us here talking. The same exact thing. What is it, Dave? Is it is it that that pain? Is it a heart attack? No, we don't, we don't know. know. We'll find but, out when they but, autopsy. But I'm no, saying no. it could have happened to you, me, John, Greg, and how we would have handled it. I don't know. Jimmy would have been at the hospital, the VA, in three seconds. We know that. But maybe I, would, I wouldn't. Have. You probably would not have gone there. I would have. Went, you would have I gone surfing, surf. probably. You yes. Know? And you probably be dead. <laughs> <in> shark. <laughs> the so shark I go would to heaven you. with my boots on. Yeah, exactly. But my point is that that's why it's disturbing because. He didn't have any health issues. He seemed to be doing really well. He's not a he's a young guy, 46 years old. He's a very popular guy in, in, on the YouTube, you know, social media outlet. He was doing what he loved at the show. And that's what we all do on a but regular how do you basis. Know he but how do you know he but, actually would think think it was You know that, what it is? You know what? It, he like didn't he think it was. Genetics, he thought he pulled though. a rib. That's right, what he so thought. You know? That's what I'm saying. But so, wait a minute. You know what's funny? I, I in his DNA, like there in his genes, I believe his father had. I know his father had some sort of problems. I, I can't remember if he told me it was hard, but I think his father had had heart heart problems. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, it, it, you know, we don't know. Obviously, you know, if you get pain there, you got to get that shit checked out. I've been guilty of getting different little pains like that. I've been to heart doctors, but, you know, it it's a it's a tough call. My, you know I mean? my, it's a tough my client, who's a physician, who's an emergency physician, said that usually rib pain is pulmonary embolism. I mentioned it before. And that could be very well it because he supposedly had his heart checked. And I'm sure knowing his wife's a cardiac you know, nurse, and I know he talks about health on his channel all the time, I guarantee he had a cardiac CT scan. So it probably was not a blocked artery or anything like that. You so know? what's the sign of a heart? Uh, but let me ask you a question. What? Let let me, Dave. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. You're an intense guy. Yeah. You're very smart. You know, I, I always tell people, you know, Dave, you're a very smart guy. Yeah. One of the smartest guys I know. Now, let me ask you: mm -hmm. If you were in the middle, if that was you, and you were working for you, and you were doing this live, you know, RX muscle, we're live on RX muscle, right. you know, and all this shit, and mm -hmm. all this was going on, and all of a sudden you're feeling a pain, there, would you have stopped and went to the emergency room doctor, or would you um, have said? You know what? Let me let me go through this. I'll I'll tell you. I thought about this. I thought about the whole scenario because um, I talked to Rich Siegelman, and Rich was doing the live stream with, with them. Um, with right. Them. So they finished for the night, and they were to go come back the next morning to do the next right. set. And I guess Jerry said, "You know, I'm very tired," and I think he had a chair massage from one of the girls there because he thought he had like the, the you know a rib. He thought he hurt the rib cartilage there, and it was making it worse. So he was very tired. He said, I want to just go to sleep. I'll see you in the morning. I probably would have gone. I would have finished the day like he did. And I probably would have gone right to the emergency room. And I would have said, you know what? Yeah, I'm but gonna... I know you don't. Because you think it, so if though? it was an escalating pain that was going on all week, I would have felt a little paranoid not to check it out. How, 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 how see, I, obviously I'm not going to ask Aaron yeah. this, but how many days did he have that pain? Do you know? Since he got was there. Was it one day, two no, days? No, it was the whole week. Huh? Remember, they got there like on Tuesday. This was, you know, we're at Saturday now, right? Or, or Friday night or something like that. So he was there all week, you know. So it was getting progressively worse. You know, it wasn't getting better. Right. So he had it from as soon as he got out there. 
Yeah, he thought he picked up a, a heavy piece of luggage and it, he pulled something in right. his rib. But it could have been that he had a low-grade pain there already and he picked it up and then maybe he was more conscious of it there. It but, works. you know. Right, but let, let me ask you, but I know you, you like to, you know, because all the bodybuilders around this, Joe Matarazzi says yeah, this one I is know. that one. Let me run over to Mike. Do you sure you would? You think I would have? Well, I would have called uh, Victor. I would have called Victor up, who's there. He's a very dear friend of mine, and Victor would have said, "You know, I know Victor. Go, go over to so and so general, whatever it is. I don't know what the hospital is there. I'll, I'll I'll call ahead or something like that, and just let's just get checked out because I know I would have called him and asked his opinion, and he definitely would have probably told me to get it checked out, or he would have seen me first right. and then told me to go get it checked what out. What about so, age? Does age have any over four? Like. No, he was 46 years old. He's pretty old. He's not really old. Really old. Old. It's not going to happen. If I was 24, old. maybe I wouldn't have got it checked out. But yeah, if but I, the, at it's our not age. Common, it's not common in a 20-year-old. In a, in a well, I mean, yeah. left left jaw pain into your shoulder blade is, is usually heart pain. It's not usually in the rib. But if you're having chronic rib pain and it's getting progressively worse, so you, you got to just check it out. I mean, an x-ray would have told you if you broke a rib or... If it wasn't a broken rib, they could have then done some more tests and seen, oh, you know what? Let's do a CT scan or ultrasound on this area. They could have but seen Dave, that's what that's you, stomach pain for that's, neighbor, but Dave, my neighbor had that. What? I didn't hear that. But that's what sets you but that's what sets you apart though, um, Dave, because you have people that the second they feel any type of remote pain, they're proactive. You see, I mean, I, I used to, um, I have I have ADD, right? Yeah. So I, at one point in time when I was in the corporate world, I used to be prescribed Adderall. Okay. And one of the things which I used to uh, understand with Adderall is if you take it at certain points in time with other t stimulants, you can have an accelerated heart rate to the standpoint sure. where it will almost feel like like actual heart attack. Right. So Anxiety, I remember one yeah. time when... Uh, yeah, I remember when I was in a conference you know, one time in Vegas and I was um, in route head heading back home and I was tired, but I had to do some more work. So I'm, you know, so I'm there waiting for my flight and I feel like this chest pain, man, like this chest pain, like somebody's just squeezing my heart. You know what I did? I called one of my friends as a doctor and he's like, Rich, it's like, um, you need it, you know, you know, like, he's like, what did you just do? He's like, oh, I just took, um, you know, like, you know, 10 milligrams of Adderall because I don't want to go to sleep, man. It's like, I needed to, um, and he's like, how long have you, he's like, you know, he's like, what, you know, what have you done prior to that? I was like, oh, well, I've been lacking sleep. I've been doing this and that. And he's like, look, Rich, it's like, this is what you need to take. This is what you need to do. And I relaxed. I went to, um, to, to one of those, um, airport, um, clubs and I, and I relaxed and I went to bed and, uh. it's a, and, I, and, and then drank water, br r washed it out and, and I was able to like, you know, persevere through it. But uh, some people will just be, will just belittle it and downplay it. I tell everyone it's, you, it's, it's a glass of wine test. If you if a glass of wine doesn't get rid of the pain that you're having, then it's not stress or anxiety related. You better get to the hospital. <laughs> that's, that's the test. Yeah. So whenever I feel like I'm having some kind of weird pain, oh, okay. I'll drink a glass of wine. If it does and then relax myself, if it goes away, then I know, all right, it's just yeah, anxiety. Yeah, because when you're younger, yeah. you're just like, I don't give a fuck. When you're right. 20, oh, right. fuck it, and it goes away because you don't even care. If I drink a glass you're of wine and I get a buzz and I'm still <laughs> feeling pain, I'm going to the hospital. Once you're 40, yeah. you start yeah. feeling your heart. You're like, yeah. oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a big one. Yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> yeah, it's like Sanford and Oh, it's hey, a big one. Elizabeth, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, did Joe Matarazzi, that guy, whatever his name is, did he tell you Rich. the pain was in the back of his ribs or it was the ribs here or ribs in the back? Because you said a girl massaged him while he was sitting down. Do you know, like... Oh, that, yeah, that's like a good question. I don't, yeah, I'm not really sure if it was the rear ribs or front ribs. That's a good question. Because if it was a sit down, more than likely... I mean, he could have felt the pain back here. We yeah. don't know. Right. I mean, your ribs, you know, that doesn't mean it's still not your heart. It could be a blockage back here or something that's still Look, leaks. they got to do an autopsy because I'm sure everyone, you know, I'm sure his family wants to know what happened, you know. Um, yeah, I'm sure, Aaron. I mean, uh, we're going to stay, you know, we're going to be talking to her again. I just want to give her a little breathing room because she's a Yeah, she's it's very, terrible you know, that everyone's throwing out their steroids and drugs and, no. and vaccines and COVID. Oh, I'm and sick of that No shit. one knows anything, guys. No one knows anything. It has nothing to do with that. That's That's that, that, that is my all-time pet peeve these days, you know? Yeah. Thank you. It is. It's so stupid. Anytime, Anytime someone dies, that's what they do. the 150th birthday, it had to be drugs. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's, how, that's the reasons why there's that saying. There's that saying, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. So, and they all and stink. They, and they all stink. They all stink. <laughs> but listen, the thing is, though, I mean, I understand it. we're in a sport where you got to be a drug addict. 
basically. You know what I mean? We all took so much shit. These guys today take a fucking drug for every process right. of the body. We're on to stop the cortisone. Yeah. Wanted, you know, fucking, you know, you know the whole story. But the thing is, you know, this is a different uh, thing. Jerry wasn't, you know, uh, Jerry, I think, took a little TRT and everything. But he wasn't like, uh, you know, blasting himself or any of that stuff. Oh, he was very intelligent. He's had a past, you know, you know, 20 years ago, he did heroin and shit. But that's that's not going to do this. You know, these guys like to make excuses why, you know, do I think people like that big country dude would be alive if uh, if he didn't take the steroids? Probably. You know what I mean? So Greg, I do believe there, in Greg, some there, cases. There's these wacko fucking troll retards that just sit there on the sidelines waiting. They right. can't wait for one of us to die. Right. And then just so they can stick in their fucking stupid comments that, that they're famous for. Yeah. John, and you know what's really funny? what it comes down to. You know what's funny? I agree with you. And you know what the fucking craziest shit is about what you just said? Those same guys, they fucking talk like they hate bodybuilders, yet right. they're on every fucking buddy's yeah. podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, or oh, 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 even worse. Right. right. What yeah. are you right. watching this they, shit for? If, I, if you don't like us, yeah. you, how many guys I see sometimes are a bunch of old men fucking crazy? <laughs> I mean, do the fuck no, you they love to hate us, Greg. <laughs> Greg, do you, do you realize, Greg, that if you, if you die at 92 years old, the day you die, they're going to say, you see, steroids killed him. He's dead. <laughs> Finally, I they, told you he was going to die. It was the meatballs. No, it was me. They did yeah. that fucking oil that sent yeah. those shit. Yeah. The yeah. Fuck yeah. 92 years old. Yeah. He died. Yeah. 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 Oil, 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 oil killed him. He got to oh, him. The oil went they, up his leg. Oh, they, his arm. Oh, they, <laughs> hit his heart, oh, they, finally. They, his hat flew off. <laughs> <laughs> Are they probably going to say, how the fuck did he die? Did he have something no, you, that could save him under his desk? No, you know what they would say? How did he live that fucking long, that motherfucker? We had him. They had me on their bucket list a long time Do ago. Do you, you have a defibrillator under that Mr. desk, G's by the way? Mr. G's cookies. Greg. I just say Mr. G's cookies. <laughs> That's right. That's what kept me alive. Greg, do you have a defibrillator <laughs> under that desk, by the way? Uh, I, I have a... Oh. Uh, I don't have a defibrillator, though. Of no. all the things you should have. Yes, you should have one under there. <laughs> yeah. They actually do have one at the, at the hotel. That they have a defibrillator because, unfortunately, my friend Anthony DiRezzo died at that same show in 08. And they actually had Victor, Pr yeah, Victor Prisk was up there with the defibrillator trying to bring him back. You're kidding me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor Prisk was there when, yeah, when he I died? called him when I because they called me from Anthony's room and they said, Anthony, lost. you know, he's... He's not conscious. He's like like passed out. We can't wake him up. And I said, I called Victor. I said, Victor, get up to Anthony's room, please. This was 08. And when I got there, because I'd been at the gym, uh, they, Victor was doing compressions on him, and they had the defibrillator there. Yeah, it's crazy. Dude, I had an argument with that guy over the Yankees Red Sox. He was such a passionate Red Sox fan. And in oh, 2003, when the yeah, Yankees... Yeah. Oh, when he 2003, he was telling me, dude, you should have never won. You guys were not the better team. Uh, and I'm like, hey, listen. That I was in 2003. I can't believe him and his wife are, are gone. Who? Terezo. No, he had a girlfriend. Matter of fact, his he girlfriend. He didn't have a wife. His, he didn't have a wife. His, blonde, the blonde girl he was with. No, no, no. She was actually no. dating my friend here in no, where no, I live. She wasn't. She didn't die. But didn't Anthony have a heart? He, he had. He had a pretty existing. He, he had a very bad he's heart. He's a boss, right? We met him at the boss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he. Look at yeah. somebody else. Does George have a hickey on his neck from here? Yeah. Or <laughs> is he a hickey or something? I think uh, Big Lenny gave it to him when he belted him. Okay. <laughs> right, I want to talk about this. It's a great story. Did you see this story? Hold on. Did you see this story about Shaquille O'Neal? You got that thing. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal uh, bought this kid like six grand worth of shoes. Did you read this? See that story? Yeah. Well, you know what he no. does? You know what he does? He, he, every time he goes out, he buys a kid something. He well, no. This kid had, like, has a really on. crazy size shoe. What does he have? Like an 18 or something like that? And he couldn't no, find shoes anywhere. The, the kid has a size. The kid has an eighteen. Well, he how, how tall is the kid? Is he over six foot? Because he's got to be. Shaquille is seven feet. That's what I'm so trying to he's say. He's got to be over, well over six feet. He's only the kid's only what wow. what. He's got yeah, a size yeah, but eighteen. That's Shaq's thing. Thirteen but, but years Dave, old. That's Shaq's thing. Every time he goes out, he buys a kid something. It's crazy. He, he, he tries to spread yeah, he's it a around. good guy. I like. Yeah, that. he's a very good guy. Shaq is great. Shaq for president. Yeah, I think I would vote for him. Yeah, he's just a great person. I mean, Can you believe it? Did, 13 buy, years old? Couldn't he buy like nine pairs of shoes what instead of shoe is, What fucking shoe is $680? No, it's $6,800, John. Get your glasses on. Pairs. He bought 10 pairs. Because they're, custom, they're pairs. custom shoes, John. Wait, 10 pairs? For $680? No, because he, he bought them like, like dress shoes, too. 10 pairs of size 18. The dress shoes were crazy. 
Like really high end, like bucks. fancy. I mean, I mean, I I, I can see. I Which were the shoes he bought? Hold on. Never. Yeah. I'd never be able to walk on those things. I I be because I step in shit all the time. Oh, Let me tell you is... something. By the way, Jerry. We're speaking of Jerry Ward. He used to have fucking I don't know how many pairs of Yeezy, Yeezys or whatever. He was he used to collect sneakers. Oh, it, really? He, he probably had more. Uh, his sneakers are probably worth more than that. Added up. He had a lot of. Sneakers I thought Dexter there. Jackson had the most sneakers I've ever seen. Uh, Nike sneakers, but I think my friend Martinez Hagens has the most uh, Nike nah, sneakers. Jimmy Mentis blows them all. No, away. no, no way. Martinez Hagens. I'm telling you, you don't know who he is, but Mar this guy has so many Nikes. He's got like it's what, like thousands a, of pairs? thousands, like in the closet with like a special never, like oh my never God. worn, never <laughs> worn. Yeah, like maybe like once. Museum? Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's probably the, why the, do people do that? What is they're worth? You know what, John? They're too. worth money. These stupid things. People collect these things. It's like base well, it's, it's um, it's just like I mean, my mentor, uh, my mentor in business had a thing with pens. Like this is a dude that had hundreds of pens, and I'm talking about like not no cheap big pens like yeah. Mont Blancs. Oh, really? And I and I used to tell him. And I used to tell him, I'm like, man, is it, is it that you're compensating for your lack of height because you're short as shit? I'm like, it's something, man. It's like, why do you spend all this money for something that all you need to use is to write? People like, like to collect shit. Like, that's why. They love it. Yeah. yeah you mean, should see my snake collection. Holy mackerel. Yeah. There yeah. You go. <laughs> I, I smelled your snake. <laughs> the hey, guys, write those down below us. Rats that you have. So every, all you fans, write down below us is where all the snakes that's are. Right, right underneath that's right. us. Really? But, but I'm not just hoarding them. I'm selling them too. So, but but the point is that people like to collect shit. There's there's no doubt about that. Yes, but thousands. But Dave, you, getting back to Shaq. Shaq is such a good guy. Rats, Shaq <laughs> understands about giving back, and I think that that's important because a lot of guys in his position, you know, they don't give a shit. You know, they, it doesn't even come across their mind. He walks through Walmart and stores looking for kids that that, that are just you know that need someone to kind of lift them up a little bit and do something special for them maybe. And that that takes a special person yeah, to do I've that. Seen him. I mean, the guy's worth five hundred million dollars. He doesn't he doesn't need to be walking around Walmart looking for kids. You know that that's, but that's he, but he awesome. said he said every time he goes out and he buys a kid a gift something. And yeah. he, I was watching his one video. He, he's talking to this kid and he goes, "You got a bike? No, I have a oh bike. yeah, that's I'm, all. I'm that gonna one. buy you a bike. Let's go get your bike. This is what I had when I was a yeah, kid. This yeah. is a cool bike. Was, yeah, Did yeah, that one's good. Too. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Let's go. He was walking <laughs> through some some some. Uh, um, like a little town in, in, I think, Atlanta, outside Atlanta. And uh, he was delivering pizzas. And he's like, uh, he pulls up to his house and he's like, uh, these kids are like, are you Michael Jordan? Are you Michael Jordan? He goes, no, I'm better than Jordan. I'm Shaq O'Neal. <laughs> he he's like, Ed, you want some you pizza? Know what I, I want to know. What? Hey, he didn't get no $6,000 worth of shoes at Walmart. I can tell you that. No. No, he went yeah, to he, a fancy He didn't buy them place. kids fucking... He didn't buy that kid fucking. He wasn't walking to Walmart. Hey, kid. No, he saw shoes. the story about the kid who couldn't get shoes because he was eight. He wore a size eighteen, and then he stepped in because, think about it. If you don't have a lot of money, and and, and a pair of shoes is going to cost you five hundred bucks to get a, a custom pair of eighteens, you know, you're probably not going to get them, you know. And so he heard about the story, hey. and he went and said, you know what, you should be able to have shoes to wear. I'm going to buy you ten pairs. This will take care of you. 18. Dude, Dave, I, I got news, news for you. I got news for you. When news gets out that he's got a size 18 foot, there's going to be a line oh, of rich cougars dude. looking for him. <laughs> I could, dude, I could use size 18 as a fucking robot. Don't buy him a I, fucking I, house I could, full of his shoes. Bro, I could sit in that thing and use it like a rowboat. You know what I mean? Size 18. I think they only, actually, be honest with you, because I'm, I, I, for a while I wore a 16, now I wear a 15. I don't think it goes up to any higher than 16 is the top. So if you're over that, you need oh, a yeah. custom shoe, and I think that's where the where the cost comes in. You'd Dave, have to how the fuck did you get a size sixteen? Foot? You know what, I, Greg? I had a I had a thirteen when I was like almost like seven uh, in eighth grade or ninth grade. I had a big foot. Oh, holy shit! And then when you I body get... built, when I started bodybuilding, and I don't think it was from GH or everyone wants to think it's from GH. I, just from getting heavy, when I went from like two sixty to three hundred, my my arch completely collapsed. I went from a thirteen and a half to like a. To a 16. So your feet what, didn't grow. I think I was really a 15 bit or 14 and a half because what Nike does, I think they do this to pump up the athletes. I think that the sizes are not proportionate. So I wear a 15 in Nikes, but if I wear another shoe, like a regular oh. dress shoe, I'm a 14. So I think Nike purposely pumps up the sizes to make it look more sensationalistic. Um, but, but Dave, do your kids... 
I think that's for like all athletic shoes because yeah. I'm the same way. In, in, in Nikes or Adidas, I'm 13, but in like shoes, I'm 12. Yeah. yeah so but you I, know what? But I when you get over 16, pretty- when you get over a size 16, they don't make those. Even if you go online oh, to nike.com, okay. you can't get them. So you have to special order them, and those are really expensive to do, you know. But I, I got I wear size like eight, eight and a half, and I got a pretty big dick, and it's fat. So what I'm saying, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? A cor- hold on, who who told you that? Blackman? Did Blackman tell you it was big? He no, lied. But, wait, listen. No, I wouldn't. Know. If, if you have a size 16 foot, do you have like a really big dick or yeah, no? Yeah, it's like 25 inches. Yeah, yeah. I wrap it around my legs. Right? He just got so it's like 20 of them gas, snakes. Way, totally. <laughs> right, Dave? No, dude, I do. I fucking, uh, I wish my, my girlfriend would talk because I got a, I got a pretty big dick. It's fat. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, I don't have a big foot. You're, that's because oh you're God. Italian, Greg. You know that. <laughs> Wait, let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? A sausage hey, maybe party? Maybe Shaquille O'Neal will buy you a pair oh. of, of, of special uh, you know, support it's underwear. Oh, that, that big medicine, yeah. My Greg, girlfriend will hold it in her hand. She'll go like, the fuck your head's like an apple. I always Greg, call it the apple. Uh, you know, Greg, you go know, out to the oh, garden man. and pick an eggplant. That's remin- that's, that's what similar. a great way to end the show. Oh, yeah, on a positive note. Oh, shit. Guys, MrG'sProteinSnacks.com. Go get your keto cookies. Get your uh, what else you got on there today? Anything special? Special order? Rice Krispie treats. Oh, you got the Rice Krispies yeah. on there now. All right. You know, someone sent me Rice Krispie treats with no protein in them. I don't know what the purpose was. No, but they made them with brown. Yeah, brown sugar. Brown, brown rice. Yeah, brown, like brown, they were. John and I are enjoying them right now. Yeah. Oh, oh fuck, it's so good. <laughs> Let me take they another are bite. Good. And my mailman is so motivated. With the <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, when I'm no longer got a man army. You know, then it. I got then the glass. Happen. What is this thing? Fucking, <laughs> what is that? I got a glass. Uh, this is a glass. Look, see. <laughs> oh, you got fruit. That's what I get to eat. I oh. need a cookie. Is that the cookie. size of one of your balls? Glass, uh, what, that's like. Do you know? Do you do you under even understand how Italian that is? I was gonna say. I was just gonna say Jewish too, uh, yeah. John. The Jews like to have the Jew- fake yeah, fruit in the bowl too. The, the fake, fake fruit. Yep. Yeah. Fake grapes? Oh, my God. You know how many th- how many times I try to eat those fake, fake grapes at my grandmother's house over the years? Oh. A million times. But that is such an old school yes. thing. I mean, that's... A glass of tomatoes. Coming back in style, John. <laughs> is, it, is, it as, is it as old school as having plastic covers on your furniture? Same Absolutely. thing. I Same don't have that. Oh, yeah. my Same God. You know, do you know that my mother still has plastic covers on her furniture? You know what? I mean, now I that I have kids, I understand why. I have to. I never understood the whole plastic thing until I had kids. Now, I would rather – I'd like to plastic my whole house, to be honest with you, because they write on the walls. They write on the chairs. They write on – I don't know where they get this from. I'm like, my, I tell my son, you're almost seven years old. Why are you writing on the wall still? Because he wants attention. I don't know. No, he doesn't know. He just does it. That's all. They don't think. Well, he wants attention. They don't he's think. A kid. Yeah. Negative or positive. They're yeah, they, get don't, they don't think. Because he's a kid. Now, now Dave, <laughs> yes. this is what, now, to, to end of that, what you do is you get a drop cloth, one of those little white hats, a brush, and a thing of paint. You hand it to him and say, okay, now you're Oh, that's what he wants me to do, John. Him. He'll paint the whole <laughs> fucking place. The floors, the... We'll come home and it'll look like uh, with the Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a snake. I, no, I, I didn't say I'm You give my son a paint bucket and a, and a, <laughs> I, I, and a, and look, a paintbrush. You're a per- in big trouble. This is a perfect job for Mr. G. Okay? <laughs> he, you got to put Logan under Mr. G's way oh, when yeah, it comes sure. stuff like that. He painted the green screen when he when when I wasn't looking in here. I got I got blue I got a blue screen and green screen to get combined now because of him. Uh, he's, I, aut- he's autistic. Yeah, I gotta wrap this up though. But uh, we we got another interview coming up, guys. Uh, we send our prayers, condolences, love out to Jerry uh, Ward's family. Uh, thank you for sharing, Greg, uh, all your uh, stories. And Richard Rodriguez, thank you for joining us. And of course, John Romano. We'll be back next week. Of course, if you want to check out Mr. G's ProteinSnacks.com, you can get your keto cookies over there. And what's the discount code, George? USA1. USA1. God bless America, baby. There you go. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next week. God bless you, Jerry Ward. God bless you, and God bless you, Aaron. Oh, man. All right. I got a boogie.